Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. This is episode one of five in our new series this week on movies. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube so that you get all of our videos. You can do that right down there, it's really easy. You can also come find us over on iTunes if you'd rather listen to this whole series all at once. We smush them together just for you. It's an audio podcast version, it's really great. But today and over this week, we're gonna talk about how we started making movies and how we capture moving images at all, how that process came to be, how our brains perceive these moving images. Because remember, it's just one frame. It's like a still picture and we just see them as a moving image. We're also gonna talk about the sound and the music and 3D movies and all sorts of other awesome stuff. So first, why did we even invent these things? I mean, it's easy to point to the earliest moving pictures as the earliest forms of movies, right? Whenever people started kind of rolling these reels of film in front of us, but it's actually more complicated than that. So you gotta go all the way back to the beginning. Cave paintings. Cave paintings didn't move on the walls per se, but those ancient paintings found in caves all over the world are some of the earliest forms of human art. We've got art, language, storytelling, those things kind of sound like a movie, right? Uh, one artist and archeologist has a theory that they may be the earliest forms of entertainment cinema. Researcher Marc Azima from a university in France looked at cave paintings from the Lacoe Caves, also in France, and saw that a lot of the paintings seemed to have layers. For example, one showed an ancient bull and it had two tails in two different positions. They think this may have been to have the illusion of the tail moving up. There was also a horse with three different heads superimposed on top of each other. Obviously there weren't three headed horses in ancient human history. So it shows maybe the movement of a horse like it was drinking from a pond. The theory is ancient artists were attempting to capture motion through art and uh, actually, the researcher made a great video showing how this all works. It's very cool. We'll put it down in the links for this show. But there are more tricks to portray movement on cave walls as well. Some drawings do look like they're moving, but only in the right conditions. You wouldn't have had a flashlight back in ancient history. You would have had a small flickering fire. And the flickering flames might show one head and then another and then another just from the light and shadow. So that play, that interplay of light and shadow might make them look like they're moving, appear like they're moving. You get kind of a flip book effect. Another ancient version of the early animation could have been found with small bone discs that had engravings on each side. This is actually a popular toy from the 19th century called a thaumatrope. It's a disc or a card attached to a couple of ropes. So when you spin them, the image spins fast enough that our brain can't tell them apart. And they end up looking like they're moving or you know, a famous one from uh, the movie The Prestige, I think, with the bird and on one side and the cage on the other. And you spin it, it looks like the bird is in the cage. These types of things are ways of humans trying to make cinema prior to it actually being invented. It's almost like two frames were being shown on repeat on that, that disc. And they found an ancient one as well. And it has a deer standing on one side and on the other side, it's sitting. So when it spins, it looks like it's moving. And some researchers think that these discs were that thaumatrope. And some think that they might've just been buttons or pendants and they could use different sides. But if you fast forward thousands of years, just to kind of show humans had this in our, in our DNA or in our brains, you know, ancient times. But we do have these inventions that give the illusion of movement. Inventions like the phenakistoscope, the zoetrope, or the praxinoscope came about in the 1830s and 40s, and they all worked kind of the same way. There are a series of drawn pictures that are spun somehow to show the illusion of motion. Essentially, the pictures are moving fast enough that our brain puts them together. But the first actual movie involving real images in motion that didn't come about until 1878. It stemmed from a bet between Leland Stanford uh, of Stanford University fame and some friends over the question if a horse has all four of its feet off the ground while it's running. Stanford said, yeah, of course it does. At one point, all the feet are off the ground. So Stanford asked a famous photographer, Edward Muybridge, to take photos of a horse as it was running to try and settle this bet. He asked this uh, of Moybridge in 1872, but the bet wasn't settled until 1878 because one, it's actually kind of tough to get that picture. You have to get it at just the right time and they move so fast. On top of that, 
you don't have a lot of external electrical lights, right? So you have to get it at the right time of day with the right amount of brightness. Also, in 1874, Moybridge caught wind that his wife was cheating on him and may have fathered the child that he had been raising. So he found the man that she was cheating on him with and killed him, shot him and killed him. So that kind of put the whole bet on hold for a while. He stood trial. He didn't deny the killing, but he was actually acquitted. The jury accepted the defense's plea of justifiable homicide. He left San Francisco where he had been living. He moved to Guatemala for a couple of years, uh, you know, kind of fleeing the country after getting away with murder. Anyway, he came back to the States, resumed with newer camera technology that existed then in 1877, and the final product was produced on June 15th of 1878. He set up 12 cameras equipped with tripwires. So when the horse ran past the camera, it would trigger the picture to be taken, and Stanford won the bet. It's a long way around, but that's what happened. And it showed that all four of the hooves were off the ground at the same time. Then Moybridge thought, oh, well, what if I put these images together? So he created something called a zoopraxiscope, where he took those photographs, painted them on a glass disc, and then projected the disc onto a large screen so people could see them. Some say that because his photographs were reproduced by an artist to get them onto the glass, it's not the actual images that you're showing on the screen, so it doesn't really count. But you know, minimal. This is the first animated short, I guess, right? He was the first person to ever produce the first sequential real images of movement ever. And this machine was the precursor to the modern film projector. So from there, other people started to improve on that technology, right? Once it was out there in the world, that becomes possible. So both by taking the photographs that would make the moving images and also by producing machines that could show them to the audience. So French physiologist Etienne Jules Marais made a camera that was capable of taking 12 pictures in a second. He dubbed that chronophotography. And then in the early 1890s, Thomas Edison, his assistant William Dixon, made a camera called the Kinetograph and a projector to show off those movies called a Kinetoscope. And that was the first machine to show movies, probably one that you recognize if you're watching this from the United States, because Edison, pretty famous American inventor. And then you could actually show those to only one person at a time, though. You had to look through a little peephole and it showed you 46 frames in a row and you'd put a little money in that thing and that was how Edison could take his invention and get something out of it. But we're gonna talk more about the technology of showing movies tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe here on YouTube, get that Test Tube Plus subscription in your sub box. Make sure you come back for that. Also, let us know down in the comments, what was the first movie that you saw? Cause I think the first movie I saw, I don't know, I was talking about it earlier today. I saw Reanimator when I was six, that left an impression, probably bad for seeing that one. But anyway, let us know down in the comments. Make sure you come find the show on Twitter. You can find us at TestTube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for tuning in.